So the guard that we are talking about of like Okama and f -sharp in pattern matching are not really like that related as the half, uh, with the half one. Like it's not the exact the same thing. So they are necessarily uh, related with pattern matching. Because when you are pattern matching, you put the patterns there, right? But that is a limit on how expressive they are, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the most expressive things that you end up having is like nesting them, putting R, R's in them, even doing like ranges with numbers and characters. But it's still, well, okay, you can still do some things like uh, pattern uh, exact literal. So it will not pattern, how can I say? Not, not everything, but only a specific ends. So you can do that, but still, you cannot do something like, oh, I want to pattern any int that you return true from this function here, like from this predicate. Right? So that's where the the guards come in. It's just a way for you to do a refinement. Oh yeah, right? I understand, but that's not that's not like. What I was talking about is like, okay, I understand the purpose of having a guard in pattern matching. Nobody is discussing about that. What I am discussing is what if you want to use a guard and you don't want to use pattern matching? How are you going to handle that? Yeah, so that's the thing. Um, what I say doesn't make sense. Oh, it doesn't make sense. So, uh, yeah, that's what I disagree, I guess. Uh, again... <laughs> The thing that I'm talking about doesn't make sense without the context of pattern match. But if you want a construct that you give a series of predicates and he will return the first that is true and it has to do a catch-all cases, sure, that's a construct, right? But a different one. Mm, I see. So you... Okay, so you only see guards making sense in the sense of refining of pattern matching and everything else you just prefer to use an if. No, that's not what I said. Yeah, because said... if you're not use if you're using guards not with pattern matching, that's it. You can do that with an if, right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, but... so that's what you're saying. Yeah. No, again, that's not what I'm saying. No. What I'm saying is I just... again, I describe it guards regarding enough sharp and it only makes sense in regarding to pattern matching like it's in my definition of stuff but then you are like talking about the Haskell guard and stuff and they do like something else and well that's another feature you can call it like guards or not I'm not saying you have to do that with ifs you can have a construct for that but well that's a different conversation Well, in that, in that case, I, I don't see... I, I think it's very annoying to to force the user to do the predicates way to using if instead, instead of guards, but that's okay. Because the guards allow you to have very short syntax to do a bunch of ifs and else's and else ifs nested, right? Which is not good. saying I'm not saying we shouldn't do that, man. No, 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 but I'm talking about specifically what are... Like, what is there cases that we can use guards or not? And you were saying that in your definition, guards only make sense in the context of doing pattern matching. Yeah, okay, so let's be clear. Don't call that thing of Haskell guards, or call it Haskell guards. But don't, like, uh, think of them as the same. Because, again, when I say it only makes sense on the context of pattern matching, I'm not talking about those Haskell guards. I'm talking about what I just defined. Yeah. If it's outside of that, it's something else. Then I'm not talking about this something else. Yeah. Yeah, so according to Wikipedia, your definition is something... It is the something else, I guess. It is just Wait, the, the what, mask away. What page are you getting? Our <laughs> computer science. Let me see that. So, yeah. So, so let's do the following. Let's try to define better. 
What is the Haskell God? Uh, like, see exactly what it is, right? And then we can see, oh, what the fuck that does? And then, what is the difference between the, the other one? Is something that we can also use, like, with the pattern matching, if it's somehow, like, more broader, more general, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I think it, what you're talking about is pattern guard. Okay. No, I, I have no idea. Let me see, pattern guard. Yeah, pattern guard can refer to the use of pattern matching in the context of a guard. That's what is written here. It's probably not the same, but... Okay, but let's make it then. So I think it should be... It shouldn't be that hard, right? Even making the one that you're describing. <laughs> of course not as easy as you're thinking. No, I'm not saying it's the easiest thing ever. I'm no, no, what to say, it shouldn't be that hard. Yeah. It's probably harder than, than you think. <laughs> That's fair. But yeah, we can try to start. Yeah, my get, but my Geta needs to code this time because he is not. No. He's not enthusiastic anymore. We lost that Mageta. Yes. We did. There is there a reason why? I'm just tired, man. No, but that, I'm I'm always tired, man, as well. Yes, but you're doing Haskell. No, but it, we can sh we can change the project. For me, it's Nathan, fine. Uh, Nathan, let's let's be very enthusiastic about doing Haskell right now. Let's be Nathan. Let's be so happy, jubilant. That's what we both are. Well, I'm not going to even describe that you, in the beginning, you were all so happy and enthusiastic about doing Lisp, and at the end, you were regretting with all your life. The, the, the thing we <laughs> did was, uh, was horrible. There is no description. Um. Uh, okay, so let's go to types. I am. I'm gonna share the screen. Like, put the code up and running in a moment. By the way, I'm reading the guard thing, and it's very fucking interesting because I forgot how how guards are are, are usually used, like the wording program. Like the first example that they give, that's what people usually call a guard. It has nothing to do with pattern matching and any shit. <laughs> and this Haskell guard. Is that things like you are checking some conditions on the on the function, right? Some preconditions. Yeah, it's that's a, a syntax sugar for ifs. Search for a no, 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 no. It has nothing to do yeah. with the special yeah. construct. Yeah, so look for the Swift guards. It is literally that. Swift. Let me take a look. Probably not. Yeah, it is just like I don't know. I want to check if something is not new before I start running my function. Oh, wait, what? I don't like it. I think it's really hidden. Dude, yeah, it's kind of weird. That's a, that's a niche. Yeah, that's kind of weird. That's a niche. It is kind of weird. Fuck? How is that different from a niche? It is not. It is not. It, I said it. No, but that's what I said in the beginning. That's exactly what I said. It is a, in the way that that I was showing oh. in the chat. It is a syntax sugar for an if. But what I mean is, what people usually call guard, like in other languages, that has nothing to do with functional programming and other magic. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's true. It's not a special construct. It's just the act of you checking preconditions on the beginning of a function. Like, doesn't care if you're using nips or such. It should be Bouncer instead, right? Something like this. Bouncer, what a name. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, you know... Uh, oh, I see, security. like, from the gate, the interesting, right? Yeah, it's a security Bouncer. Okay. I don't know about Bouncer, but they should call it something... Oh, well, Guard is actually a good name if you say Guard is a good... Okay, I don't know, Royal Guard, I think that's better. Let me see. Slider code with less nasty. Oh yeah, 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 that's actually pretty good. 
Wait, but if yeah. you're gonna implement the guards in the sense of being a refined with pattern matching, wouldn't that require to have to change the e pattern matching uh, data type? Like, yeah, take a look on the on the screen. Oh, I'm sharing the screen, right? I'm not no. sharing the screen. Okay, sorry for that. Now I am sharing the screen, right? Yes, you are. Wouldn't we re that require to have other stuff in here? Uh, an optional, like a, yes. another thing that is optional, right? Yeah, it would be to have a maybe in in the triplet would be a quadra, a quadra stuff. I don't know four stuffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but we will change the yeah. yeah, yeah. But we will change the yeah. So now we have like another expression, as you said, right? No. Um... Another expression like eguard, you mean? No, the same node, right? Oh, in in this node here, so it's gonna yeah, be like... expression. No, and uh, maybe I guess expression like that. So you have the possible guard, you have the branch. Now it's the thing that changes. You see there where you have a label and a list of labels. Yeah. That's a pattern for the sum type, right? You have the constructor name. And the things it carries, right? Yeah. Now that will be abstracted in the pattern. Now that will be ex abstracted in a pattern. Can you be yeah, a little bit like you're calling a pattern, like a constructor in a list of names? Uh, uh, create a data type called pattern. Mm hmm. And just put one of the keys as something like A. Mm. That let's suppose it carries like label and a list of labels. What is, what would be another pattern in this mentality here, in this way of thinking? Uh like patterns, like we have in the languages. Like one of the patterns is a wild card, the other is a verbal, the other are literals. Oh, I see, I see. So you're going to have for literals, I guess also for a list, right? Because you maybe want to better match the the list being empty or something like that. Yeah, that stuff. So it would be, I don't know, P. I don't have a, I don't have a, a good name for this one. So it's going to be just pattern. <laughs> I think you said some type, right? Some type. So this is a label and a list of labels. And then we're gonna have also the wild card. Wild card. Uh, which is just wild card, I guess. And then we're also gonna have a litro. Uh, yeah, not that simple, but yeah. Or something along those lines. Yeah, let's let's do the following. Let's start with one litro like int and not use list for now. Especially because they will probably not work that way. Okay, so in here instead of having a label and a list of labels, you're gonna have a pattern. Is that correct? I guess so. Uh... So Put the variable there, like it's also a simple one, as is the wildcard. A variable? What do you mean by a variable? Well, one of the possible patterns that you can match, it's a variable. In that case, you're going to need a, a, a name as well, right? Yeah. So like a label here. I actually uh, need this to be at the bottom. Sure. We have the the one that might be I don't know. But we also have the the one that you said, right? The the R pattern, the disjunctive union or something. No, oh, so it's gonna be P disjunctive. And then what is it is is it it is it is a list of patterns? Not a list, right? Just two. Just two. What do you mean? 
We can invent something. Yeah, we can invent, but I want to understand why we want only two. It's a like we what get if... two. If you want a list, you just do nested. It's the same effect. But that way we don't have to worry about list operations. Checking if a pair is equal is easier than to check if a list of is equal, so you know. But when you use disjunctive pattern matching, uh, Magetta, are you aware on the use case of a disjunctive pattern matching? If I'm aware, yes, but okay. I don't know what you want to do. What we want to do is we want to have a list of possible patterns and all of them mm -hmm. will go to the same branch. Uh, Lemos, can you type it out a yeah, Boolean yeah. expression? Like a NOR Boolean expression with three components, like in Haskell. Yeah. So let's suppose that you have a data type letter, which is A, B, and C. And then you want to pattern match, like a K is X off. And then you want the A to go to zero. And you also want the B and the C to go to one. So let's add a D here. You said three, right? I don't know. Like that. So what, this is what I, this is my understanding of disjunction pattern matching. You put the patterns and then this thing, will, all of them go to the same range. Is that hmm. correct, Nathan? Uh, yeah, I was talking literally about Boolean expressions, but yeah. Uh, and the thing is, the parallel with Boolean expressions is that they are the same lemons. Like you don't need a list. You can have two, and when parsing, you just mm. next them, right? But why would you want to do that? That's well, what I understand. First of all, it's a lot simpler from a code perspective. You see the operators that you are type checking, how trouble that is? If they were like binary, it would be a lot simpler. Yeah, you make two, and then you get the product of those two, and then you make with another. Is that what you say? Yeah, he's Wait, saying to, to nest the P disjunctive like you. Let's suppose that you have three and then you do like this. You right? do two. And so then you, you do, do A and then another disjunctive, B, another yeah. disjunctive, and so on and so forth. So like I when you do parsing, right. you're going to have to do a fold, basically. Yeah. And then the question is, why is that better than having a list in this particular case? I'm not talking about the operator stuff. The operators, I understand mm -hmm. the, 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 the problem. Yeah. It's easier in the code for us to treat that. There is a, the operator example is because it causes the same problem if we use it at least. Uh, it doesn't represent the thing as good as the other because, for example, in a list it can be empty. Why do we need to read this case if it will never happen, right? Doesn't make sense. Yeah, I, I would say that that's fair because of the not having dependent, dependent types, but we could just not parse that. We couldn't just not allow that to happen, but okay. Yeah, so then we end up with the same code that we have in other places. Like we type check an empty list to give a, a runtime error saying, oh, this should never happen. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, okay, okay, anyway. So let's... You know that one day that will probably happen, right? It <laughs> happened already. Wait, what? <laughs> I yeah. don't recall when, but it, we did have a case in which a message like, this should never happen, and it happened. <laughs> kind of sad, actually. Yeah. So, something out. The sum type pattern, now he needs to take a list of patterns, right? He needs to take a list of patterns? Why? Instead of the labels one. Why we need the, because it's nested. So you put a constructor and then you want to. I I I don't I don't get it. Why we we need a list of patterns instead of list of labels? Let me show that example. Oh, I see, I see, I see. If you do left one, right? Instead of left Y. Yeah, or something like that. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Uh, so we have variable 
and wild card, like the basic ones. Then we have the R, the more complex one. We have the sun type, and we have the litho, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then the only uh, one that is remaining is the least one. Yeah. Can you take a look on what is litho? Uh, yes. Oops. Just to see if we can really do like that. Ah. Uh, okay. So we have a unit. It's unit, integer, or rational boost unit. Like, we have no problem, right? So yeah, I don't think so. Parse those, put into patterns. Yeah, I guess we can do like that. Okay, so do we, aside from list, are we missing any other pattern that we want to support? Oh, any other data type should be able to match, right? Like records, tuples, every data type I get. Well, I don't know. No, I don't have tuples, and I think, I guess tuples would be considered literal if we ever make tuples. It doesn't make sense to build literal. A tuple, why not? Wow, because it's composed, I guess? Because it's composed. What do you mean by composed? Like it takes other stuff inside, right? Yeah, no, but it's, I was thinking like we did It's that... not primitive, like it's formed from other primitive types. Oh, you mean the not... same sense of the list? Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, it, is, uh -huh. it, ha it, can has, it can have expressions inside it, that's what you're... Like, it's not primitive in that sense, I guess. Yeah, let's not think about the list part now, because we already have, like, some complicated cases. Yeah, I, I understand that. Okay, so list, uh, we will only do in the future. You said records, right? Records you don't have it at the moment, right? Maybe, sure. Yeah, we only did the ADTs to some types and product types. We don't have records. We only have anonymous records. Oh. Uh, oh, well, that's something you should be able to match, right? Yeah, definitely something that you should be able to match. Wait, what are the limitations when I get the anonymous records in a shop? There are some things that you cannot do, right? Can you potter match the... Uh, you cannot dismember the things, but you cannot do that with a normal record anyway. What? For, yeah, you cannot better match the content of the record in F Sharp. Any. Doesn't matter if it's like anonymous or not. Can you give an example of a valid code on that? Uh, yeah, I think you can write something like this in Okamo. Let me see. I saw you doing this. And in Haskell, you can better match the values of the record as well. You can? You can. Oh. Yeah, we can because we did it, but... <laughs> oh man, this is kind of sad in F-sharp. Uh, so you cannot do this, let's say, right. I don't know. You're pattern matching a sum that has a record inside. And then you would think, okay, can I do... Maget, if we ever make a project in F-Sharp, would, would you be excited every single session? No. Okay, so what are the what is the percentage of... Are you sure, Maget? Yes, you can't. Oh, wait. Dude, come on. <laughs> yeah. I even have an F-Sharp project open right here. Let me test this shit. I will be really sad. Yeah, that's sad. <laughs> come on, Maget, give me the number. Uh, number for what, man? Percentage of sessions in, in which you're gonna be excited because it's F sharp. I I don't know, man. It's not because of the language, man. But that's what's that, your the your your complaint. Oh, this oh, is Haskell it, stuff. Oh, definitely the language helps, <laughs> but I don't think that is the problem of the language. Okay, that's just fair. Let me, just let me test here to see if I'm not saying bullshit, Jonathan. But I think I'm not. I am testing. Yeah, he's testing it right now, I guess. 
It works, dude. It works? Oh, okay. It works? <laughs> Thank yeah. God it works. Uh, check with an anonymous record. Does it work? Probably not. Let me check. Let's see. Uh, no, it doesn't. Or you didn't see an expected single. Yeah, it doesn't. You cannot get the type right, so. Oh, you can. Oh, you can. It's the anonymous record, but <laughs> it doesn't get. The... I, f I I know that another thing that you can do that in no comma that you can't in F sharp is the, uh, like comma dot dot on a record. Or dot dot dot, I don't know. You know when you like just want to get one thing of the record, but the rest you don't care? Uh, you can't. Are you sure? Yeah. I check if... Let me check one thing. Do... Can you do this, this membrane, with two elements? I'm not sure you can. Maybe there that you was can. the problem. Age. Age. Let's see. This idea of abstracting out the list, the it's... label and the list of labels to a data type pattern, it was a very good idea, Nathan. Uh, the dot dot, my uh, it's not something that you, uh, that you really, wait, 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 wait. wait. Let, let me just test this shit. Uh, well, you can extract only one, like ignoring the rest. Uh, but can you do the dot dot dot? No, you can't. I don't remember even. Oh, it's not dot dot dot. It's like just wildcard, right? In Okama. I don't know, man. We do. Yeah, but apparently you can't in shot. I don't even remember the justification for the wild card. So it does pattern match with multiple. Okay, so it's not that bad. I remember something like this that I cringed when I discovered that I couldn't. Be right back. Dude, I installed OpenBSD on my laptop. Okay. Half my, my cores are offline. Because it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't get it. <laughs> wow, that's weird. I mean, it's secure, right? It doesn't use half of your power. That's secure. <laughs> Less, uh, <laughs> that's more, the, the correlation of battery. the big brain. Yeah, battery optimized. I see. What type of project you would be interested in doing F Sharp? You're really concerned about this, man. <laughs> I am, man. I am. The, 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 dude, my my main problem is not even like the, the language or something. It, it can be, like your language certainly was. <laughs> uh, it's not like I hate Haskell. I'm fine with this. I'm just like tired of doing the same thing, you know? Like for, we've been doing this for like two, three months, man. Yeah, well, this is the 30 session, session 30. Yes, dude. <laughs> uh, well, it's part of the process, right? We chose to do something really more complicated than we usually. Oh, we could have done just a shitty language, so like I don't know. Yeah, we could just uh, like do untyped, for instance. It would be a lot faster. But I, I said this in the beginning of the process, like, dudes, uh, you you guys are aware that this is gonna take so much more time than everything It'll else, take right? One year. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said five months, and we are well, yes, but, thirteen days no, but from wait. the. We the also world. said, but we also said we can just do a part of it, and then we halt, do other projects, and then we go back. No, we but that's this. no. You, we also said that, but then I said, okay, but how much time we think we're gonna take to make the first phase? And then I said five months, and we are 13 days from my prediction, right? Uh, but we are way beyond the f the part, right? The part that we committed ourselves to. I do. don't think so. If you take a look on that, we I think we're still behind. Because if you take a look on the features, uh, we don't have recursive data types, right? Because we, we can't do, like, 
a, a type, an EDT that requires the EDT. Uh, algebraic data types, you don't have records, so this is incomplete. Pattern matching, this is different pattern matching, that's what we are doing. Haskell guides, we are also kind of thinking about that as, as well. And this is already kind of done. So we are only mm -hmm. recursive data types and records behind the schedule. And then after getting this done, I would be 100%, like a thousand percent willing to do, to like stop this. Let's do something else. Let's change gears to, I don't know, F Sharp or Camel Projects or something like that. And let's focus on something else. And we uh, we already, like you specifically already thought about doing these two, compilable and type inference. Oh, the, the compilation will take ages. <laughs> yeah, compilation is really hard. Anyway, Nathan, are you back? Yeah. Okay. So, what we were discussing? Oh, oh, oh right. You guys were discussing if the records in F# -sharp suck, but apparently they do not. Oh, a bit, but <laughs> they suck less than I thought they did. Uh, okay. The modules do suck. The, the modules do. Okay, but is this all that all that we need in terms of the data type? Uh, to make the both the guards and the the pattern matching using other patterns like literals and stuff like that and wildcard. Hey. I guess so, right? At least for now. Yeah. Okay, so the, the yeah, first can start with that. Yeah, I think that the first function that we should take care of is the type checking of that because now that we have a pattern instead of a label with a list of labels, we need to pattern match that. To discover which one it is, hmm. because now this 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 guy here to match. This is only if you have a what is it called a P some type. Then you're gonna have a, a label which is the to match, and you're also gonna have a list ah. of patterns. No, 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 you can pattern match anything, right? No, no, yeah, but I'm I'm I don't want to. M Pattern match in, in like increase this length of this function. I kind of want to pattern match oh, in here. Sure. So then we're gonna have a list of uh, what was that called before? Before the data type was instead of pattern, it was label, and the list of labels, right? Any expression here? Wait, 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 wait. Can you go back there in the function that you were? Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. So that doesn't work, right? You are, yeah, that doesn't work. What do you mean it doesn't work? Wait, 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 wait. Because this is an E pattern matching, and before we had like this, right? So to match, it was like yeah. this, right? Yeah, but yeah, but what you, what you are doing, like, you're not even compile. Because what is the pattern? The pattern is inside the list, right? The to match is an expression. To match is an expression. Wait, what? Oh no, the to match is this guy. This guy is the other list. Now I understand. Yeah, I'm we're gonna have to, I'm gonna have to redo all of this, I guess then. I hope so. <laughs> oh, here it is. Yeah, here it is. <laughs> This is the function that I couldn't read last time, I remember. Well, you could yeah. because I helped you, but you couldn't read it without help, that's for sure. Uh, but you can make it better this time, so that's a good a good opportunity. Yeah. So, so this And the list... other thing, Lemos, is that you have to consider not only the patterns in the branch, but also the type of the expression to match, like to base on the things you are going to do, right? The type of the expression to match. Could you be a little bit more specific? Which expression are you talking about? You only have one expression to match. I said its name. Oh, this guy. Yeah, like, it's, ah, man, it's a lot of work, but yeah. It's a lot but, of work. <laughs> yeah, because uh... you, were, you were, like, uh, trying to, to get the pattern to, like... Uh, Wait a second, dude. Wait a second. Shouldn't we make an expression for a guard? Or is this gonna... Yeah, because isn't it using special syntax and stuff like that? Or is it just gonna be a, a when and stuff like that? Because you have to take a look on the, on the syntax that Magetta created there. No. 
Yeah, just a win or something uh, extra. Just to... But wait, what does ha what what this has to do with yeah, the but... AST? It does because how are we gonna Oh no, this win is only gonna be participating in the parcel level, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you're right. Oh you mean porting okay, I get it for this one. Okay. What do... okay, so it is a lot of work you say. Yeah, so you saw that you had the 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 I don't know how to say like the wrong touch. It's the not willing, the, wheel the willing the willingness. No no it's not in that sense this case. Uh well you felt like you needed yeah, we needed, I guess it's a good one. You needed to to get the the pattern and shit to differentiate what you were going to do. Yeah, but that also depends on the type of the two match. That's what I'm saying, it's a lot of work. Like it depends on a lot of stuff what you will what code you will run. Like it's it, it will be a lot of work. Like you can Wait, wait, I am still confused. You are saying that this guy depends on this guy? No, I'm saying that the code you will run depends on both. The code you run depends on both. Yeah, that's correct. What's the problem? Yeah, the thing is, you were trying to, oh, if that's the pattern, we do that. If that's the other partner, we do that. Because, yeah. like, it would be easier to read. Yeah. But, yeah, you would still have a nested inside because you would match the type of two match and do different stuff, you see? It will be huge anyway. No, I, I'm still not seeing. Do you agree that we could have a list in which we have this is a tail and this is the head and I can pattern match the head with like pet, pet, p, some type and then the label and I, then... I the... actually don't agree. <laughs> okay, you don't agree. So can you explore why that's the case? So this is Yeah, the... because you need why? extra information. And this is the branch, I guess. You need extra information, what do you mean? Yes. Uh, for example, if you have a list of patterns, like to know if you match stuff and shit, it's not enough for you to see what you still need to match. But you kind of also need what you already matched, right? Not, that's, yeah, that's very confusing. Could you explain it? Give me an example. Yes, of that? the case of int, for example. Suppose uh, I'm trying to match an int, right? Mm hmm. And then you can, like, suppose you are, like, inside a for, and you can have an initial state that you will be changing throughout the iterations, right? Mm. One of those pieces of state could be something like, oh, what you still need to match, right? In the case, let's suppose that's something like an ADT, and then it would say something like, oh, you still need to match all, right? Because... Like, the numbers are infinite, so you need to match all. The only thing would actually match that would be either a wildcard or a variable, right? Yeah. So then, if on the four you find that I'm trying to match with a, with, a num with a number, then you know I can proceed to the next iteration of the four because it didn't, like, supply everything. It was not a wildcard and it was not a variable. But what is the problem with that? The problem is, I know it was not enough, but how do I know if it was too much? Like, for example, am I trying to match one again? Is that an unreachable case? The only way I know that is if I know all the previous one that I already matched. Oh, so the reason we can't do like this is because... You need some extra state. state. We need some extra state. Yeah, I but don't put that in that function there. I think I got it, but that's a, that was a very complicated explanation. I don't know if I got it, but that's okay. It really is a complicated. <laughs> oh. uh, okay, so you have a list of triplets in which you have a pattern, potentially yeah, a Yeah, why don't you copy and paste like this code and comment one of those, right? That way you don't mess it up what we... Oh, we have on Git, right? Yeah, we yeah but maybe we need to, like, take a look, right? Okay, so let's... Uh, I think until this, this better match, we are totally fine. So let's delete everything. 
So we type checked it to match, so we do the tie, and then we nice, nice. So let's start with this in theory <laughs> simple one, right? So int, <laughs> right? The T int. Uh, wait, there is another 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 thing that I think we should do. Because this list here, shouldn't we or uh, at some point, you're also going to have to type check this maybe expression, right? To see if it's... Yeah. Sure. Okay. So, uh, what you're talking about, you're talking about trying to pattern match the pattern. Is that correct? Wait, I didn't understand. You're talking about T integers and stuff like that. So, what what is what is that for? What you're talking about? Well, we are pattern matching the type... And now it doesn't make any sense to call potential some type anymore. What do you mean? <laughs> oh, uh, because this can be whatever. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, because now you can pattern match not only ADTs, you can pattern match whatever. Okay, that makes sense. So, if that's... Maybe, that's... maybe it's not a type limit. <laughs> Maybe it's on a type. What do you yeah, mean? Yeah, because it's potentially a type. Yeah, it could be like an integer. It could be something else that is not a type. <laughs> no, it can, it can only be a type. Okay, that's Oh, right. okay, okay. Oh, it can only wait, be a wait, type. Wait. Oh, okay, this is the type. Yeah, we are picking the, the match. So let me type it down. So match V off. No, you see uh -huh. this V? This is the two match. Yeah. Then we are type checking that, and now because we can have pretty okay, much pattern matching everything, point. right? Mm -hmm. That means that the type is always a type. The only thing that matters is like t integer, right? If you have a type integer, what do you do, Nathan? Uh, I think yeah, it's faster now... to do the, the, the wrong ones first, like T unit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, so I guess so. Okay. <laughs> okay, so type your uh, found. Wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean by that? Uh, that's not an error, right? That's not necessarily an error. Can you what? What are what are the use cases of pattern matching a unit type? Oh, I don't oh, know, but it's example. not an error. Wait, I don't know, but it's not an error. Uh, like left and right, and then the left is unit, let's say. No, but left and no, right, the unit the is type. inside the left. This yeah, is, but this is even, the V. No, but okay, but it doesn't matter. Even if you even if it doesn't make sense, like that's... You have no right. reason for that to be an error. Okay, so if you pattern match a unit, what is going to be the type of all of this? T unit? Well, depends on the branch. Oh, you right? have to check, right? Wait, what did yeah. you say, Nathan? You have to check, right? It depends on the branch, man. Depends on the branch. Yeah, like, it, wait, isn't the type? Wait. Uh... Like, that is just the type of the, the thing to matching, right? The type of the whole expression should be the type of the... Yeah, the branch. Uh, I agree with that. Yeah. I totally agree. Oh, Magenta. Well, not Magenta. Well, also Magenta, but Lemos. Uh, maybe we should uh, like separate that part so it becomes a little bit easier at least. Because we have different, uh, can I say, different concerns, right? Like one of the concerns is to check for like uh, exhaustiveness and unreachability, right? So you analyze the patterns to see if there is any valid pattern, if it is exhaustive, if it is, has something unreachable. Like that's one part, right? I think we should work on that. And then we do the other like piece of code for doing the other thing. The other thing is, okay, now I will bind the, the what's the name? I will bind the identifiers to types and see the types of the branches and see if they are all the same. Like do that do that as a different check. 
No, I agree in separation of concerns, but I think that the concerns that you brought in the, in the beginning, like uh, run reachability and exhaustiveness, that's what that's like later concerns. For now, I would say that what Magetta said of checking the branches and etc., that's actually something we should make a function just for that. Like check check all branches. Uh, which picks a list of expressions. You cannot do in the other order, I guess. Lemus. And then maybe... I think this is going to be a maybe type. Lemus, you cannot do in the other order. I don't understand. We did it, right? B this function is a demonstration of that. Uh, I don't think so. No, I don't think... Uh, for example, how, take a look on the whole item. Not the case. We didn't think of exhaustiveness of and enrichability, and we made it, right? These Man, that's, that's not the problem. To start, you don't have different patterns there. No, uh, I agree that this is a first draft. I agree with that. No, that's not what I mean. Like, that's a different, like, completely different program and problem what we had before. Okay, okay, go on then. Uh, one example is... For you to do the check on the branch and stuff, you have to generate the bindings, right? Like the types for the binds at least. So for that, you have to check the binds before. You cannot just do bind without checking. No, no, but that's a separate concern. Doing the, the, the verification of the binds, adding those to the environment, and then doing the... Actually, you are right in the sense that I need to add the environment here. But that's the thing. You cannot to the bind generation, if you haven't checked if the, the formats are correct, you cannot even generate them. Wait, I, I, am, I, I think I'm confused. I'm talking about two separate things. One of the things is to pick an environment and pick all the branches and type check them and see if they are equal, you return the, the type that they are equal. Yeah. Another completely different thing is to pick the list of binds, like pick the list of names and, and then type check those and if they are, those are correct, you add those to the environment. Wait, can you repeat that? Yes. So there are two processes, two process occurring separately here, but they one depend on the other. So the first one is to pick the list of binds, the list of names, and you assign them to types because you, I don't know, let's suppose it is an ADT, right? So you do know that the type of the Y in the pattern matching of left Y you know that the type of this should be an integer and or something. Okay, and then you type check that with the, and then you add the Y to the environment with the type. All of that I'm calling process one. And then after you have that environment, that updated the environment with the binds, then you call this function here that will pick that the updated environment and you, update the, you pick the, the, the branches and it will check if they are, have all the same type. Okay. So I'm just saying we should, instead of making, as I did last time, in one single shot, we should try to identify which processes we can make separate functions for. Oh, sure. And then the first one that I think I identified is this one. Uh, yeah, but there are two things. Go. The first one is that you are going against the, the group mentality and maybe... Uh, doing a, a way of doing bad abstractions. So you are not doing the naive code to abstract. You're trying to guess an abstraction, right? Even if you did that before, like now you are doing a different thing. And the other thing is, I was talking about a different thing regarding, as you said, these two process has a specific order, right? Mm -hmm. But what I was saying, and that's unrelated with which function you want to write it first, is before all that, you have to do the thing of exhaustiveness and shit. Because if you don't know if the format is right, you cannot generate the binds. Checking exhaustiveness is not, is, isn't just... It includes to... that. Yeah, I don't know, maybe I'm missing something, but in my understanding, checking exhaustiveness doesn't have anything to do with what I just said. But maybe I'm uh. missing something. Okay, that's good. Uh, so let's go. So what we should do first. So let's pick something a little simpler. So like an example a unit, right? So the value of what you're trying to match is a type of unit. What should we do about that? Okay, we have branches, right? What yeah. do the branches have? Each 
Well, well, we don't have branches, but we do have. Oh my god. Well, we literally have. We have branches glued to something else. That's what I'm trying to say, yeah. I guess. Yeah, I'm calling everything a branch, right? Like the pattern guard and shit. It's a four, four flood, I guess. Oh, <laughs> <Four> <laughs> <flood>. <laughs> that name. Oh, okay, so. <laughs> okay. So each ex uh, it, this is the branch, right? This expression on the right, this is the branch. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay. We t we know that what you're trying to match is a unit. What should we do with this list about uh, with that information? Yeah. I guess we need to go initially on a four, like mm -hmm. this on a four, I guess. Yeah, because then we can do something like a four. I'm thinking four here because it's the like more general one. Mm -hmm. Then we need to cast the initial state, something like, oh, what do I need to match, right? And then somehow you say it's a unit. Um, yeah, maybe you need to, to create another ADT for that. And then on the iteration in the four, you check, okay, what is the pattern that I have here? If it is the pattern, the unit, and I don't have a guard, oh, then it's already done. I match it all. Uh, if it is, I don't know, a wrong pattern, it is a neighbor. If it is a variable, it is okay. If it is okay. If, it is okay. if the maybe expression has a guard, then you need to keep going until you have one without a guard, at least. Wait, why do we need to keep going if you have a guard? Because... Oh, now I, I am I... understanding what you said about, oh man, this is going to be so hard because you need to check all these conditions. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> That's work, <hard>, right? <laughs> That's a lot of work. Uh, I don't even know how to explain that. Uh, yeah, I think I know how to explain it. Because if you don't have a if you have a guard, that potentially means that you're not gonna go to that branch, right? Yeah. So you need to keep going in the sense of oh, if you have a pattern which is of the unit, and you don't have a guard, you don't go on. You the four you, short circuits. It will not always match, right? You need more. It will not always match. Well, not in this case. Not in the case of the T unit. No, I mean in the case of having a guard. Doesn't. Oh yeah, no. In the case of having a guard, you need to. Ch you would. Well, you would have to check if that you guard always is always. You always need like more. Yeah, but you cannot do that. <laughs> yeah, you can. You cannot do that. You can only say that the thing is a T boolean, right? So you need to keep going. You need to keep going. Yeah. That's so oh, annoying, yes. holy crap. You see you saw that thing there from the four. Man, that's that's the gist of it. That's basically what we are doing for all the types with different rules. So what we need to do is to Well, because you're doing the Greg way, let's just do it right here then. Maybe later I, I we abstract things out if we see common patterns. Okay, so we are talking about making a function, right? That function, will, it will have to pick a, a specific triplet, right? So if you have the pattern uh, p literal, uh, and that pattern is the literal l unit. Uh, uh, yeah, you can't. You can't do that. I can't. Oh, oh no, no, no sorry. You we would do like the the top level pattern match for. Yeah, no, this is the function that I'm going to call in the for. That's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So if you have that, and then here you're going to have a maybe guard. So let's suppose that this, this guard is nothing, right? Just for the sake of simplicity. Then you're going to have a branch, right? So if that's the case, then you're only going to have to do... Uh, you're going to have to type check that, right? That's, that's, the, that's the end of the, of the for, I guess. Is that correct? Wait. Uh. 
Man, you're gonna have to do this for all of them. This is so <laughs> hard. Okay, it, it is... Well, this uh, is not necessarily we, regards to guards, but okay. What if we return like a boolean from this case that we are doing? Uh, what you do see you mean this, return a boolean? What do you mean you see the case type, and based on that, we check the patterns and such. What if we return a boolean from that? And... Oh, wait. Wait. Oh, shit. No, we can do a filter. That's that's an option. No, no. What I mean is, uh, like regarding, for example, you have the branch there, right? Mm -hmm. Shit. I was thinking about the thing <laughs> of doing separate or together. The thing regarding, uh, like generating bindings and shit, right? Uh. Because, yeah, if you are not doing everything together and returning the type of the branch, then what are you returning? Like, there are you returning already something like a result, right? To see if it it uh, matches all the pattern. Like, if it is okay, you proceed to generate the bindings and check if the branches all have the same type. If not, if it's an error, you just like return the error. I was thinking about doing the second, like if you're encountering an error doing d throughout this process, you just bubble that up. Okay. And if it is okay, then you go through more code that to generate the bindings and do the branch stuff. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Then how do we do that exactly? Like. Okay, so let's try to think a little bit more carefully about this. So what we want to do, we want to iterate throughout this list. And then we want to encounter some patterns. And based on their values and if they have guards, we want to... What we want to do, we want to keep the branches or remove them. Is that right? Uh, that's the thing. We just ignore the branches like on this piece of code, right? We just ignore the branches. So, if you are just checking the patterns instead of generating the binds, if you are just checking the patterns, no. But wait a second. Wait a second. In, in the in this particular pattern, we don't have binds, right? Yeah. Okay. So the only case that matters is when you have a piece. Oh, no, actually, you can have a a bind. Yes. Okay, so how do you do a bind with that? Because I'm imagining like match. Oh, well, a variable, right? And then you're doing unit. Wow, but what if you do like A? And then you have A with the... No, no, if you have A here, then it's not going to pattern match this. Huh? Yeah. If you have A yeah. there, you're going to have like function. And then you're going to have P variable. And then you have a, a label. And yeah. Sure. Whatever, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm talking about specifically with this one that I'm I'm gonna call this for this unit base case. This is the base case because this is the easiest one possible. The guy okay. instead of adding a name, it added unit like this, and then it doesn't have a guard, so we can be sure, right? And then. If that's the case, we don't proceed to go to do anything else. Is that correct? We're gonna like let's suppose that you have other I don't know, A and then you do something and then here you're also doing something. You're gonna ignore this, right? It depends on what you mean by ignore. Like it will be a neighbor, right? Unreachable and shit. Oh uh, let me like do the the question like more Man, checking for exhaustiveness and, and reachability is so annoying because... I'm pretty just... sure I told you that on the last session. No, no, but you told me, but I didn't t took that, like, I didn't take that as, like, a 10 out of 10, yeah, like, podium annoyance 2023. <laughs> Naive of you. <laughs> uh, but let me do the question to be more explicit. Do we want to do everything in one row, 
checking if the patterns uh, are okay together with as of stiffness and generating the bindings and returning uh, the type of all the branches in a list. So then we can check if they are all equal or we want to do them in different pieces of code. Like first check the exhaustiveness and if the patterns are okay. And then a different one to generate the binds and get the types of the branches and check if they are all the same. My, like what's the approach? My intuition is saying that the second is easier. Doing everything together? No, that's the first one. Doing everything oh. separate is, is the second. Oh, okay. Yeah, so then we can just like really ignore the branches, right? Oh, yes, here, right? yes. Then we can yeah. just ignore the branches. And then it comes my other question again. Then if that piece of code is not to return the last like thing of that function, right? You have to think about that. So you see this case type of, like will that return a result? Well, it depends on what we want to accomplish using this this thing. So, what we want to have checking for we are checking exos, exos, exhaustiveness, right? Yeah. So, what we want to do is to check if all the possible patterns are accomplished in a given pattern match. Yeah, but that per se doesn't matter. Like, what it matters is that can fail or not, right? Well, if, if, it, if we return a result, we can fail just fine. Yeah, but how, how does that work? Like, we just ignore the the result? No, we, we're because... not going to ignore it, because what my understanding is that we're going to do a for, or a for them, right? No, no, not inside, I'm not talking inside there, where you have the cursor, I'm talking about the whole case expression. Oh, you that mean you return a result, right? That returns a result. So, yeah, then how do you do? Like, you just do some bind and ignore the, the value? Because what I guess we want to do is, if that case, everything stuff returns an OK, then we proceed to the other piece of code that, like, check the branches and stuff. If not, we just want to, we just want the urge to just, like, Bubble up, right? Yes, yes, we just want the error so to bubble up. How do you write that? Like, you just do the, the arrow, think... ignoring that? I am, I don't know if I got your question. What I can, I can say about the result stuff is that if you are doing some sort of a for or a fold with a list, which is in our case, uh, if you have a result that is the bad guy, like the error, it will bubble up just fine. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Because my like again, this function that we are making here, this is just a function to 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 uh, that we are going to be using in the for them or in the for. And then if some of them return throw error, and we achieve this, then everything will stop, and we're just going to throw out the error. Is that okay? Like not a. Yeah, I guess so. Let's keep going and then we we see what we need. Okay, so in the case of the the value being the type unit, which are the cases that we should care about? This one, we are checking if it's a unit and it's nothing. The wild card, right? Sorry? Wild card. The wild card as well, that's a good one. The wild card. P wild card, right? So those are the ones that we sh we're gonna return. Uh, what's gonna be the return of this guy? This is just for to check exhaustiveness, right? Yeah, just put on the final on those and start to write the for because those things depend on like what is the accumulator, right? Yes. We don't know yet. Okay, so everything else is an error. I don't know. Okay, you don't know. Oh, but let's think about it, right? We, we, we know the data type. So the data type is P some type. 
Uh, I guess that would be an error because it doesn't make sense if the value is a unit. Oh, yeah, yeah. The variable, it is a name. Literally so that's okay. all the others, this considering the variation on like the, the guards and such. Yeah, like all the other are like just other data types, right? Yeah. Oh, but then you said something important. What if we oh, have a, a guard? Are... Yeah, what if we have a guard instead of a nothing? We need to care about that. Yeah, but that's not as important. Not as important as actually the R is important because you could do the R. You could do the R, right? You could, definitely could do the R. Wow, man! I'm this is this is like. What what was the other thing that we did that took that, that this mental strain? Nothing. Nothing, right? <laughs> Thankfully, I wasn't here. Aegis was the most harder so far, and it's pretty easy compared to this. What what did you say, Nathan? Uh, type Aegis oh, type was Aegis. the hardest thing we have done so far, yeah. and it's nothing <laughs> compared to this. <laughs> Because there are so many conditions to check. Yep. So if you have a, a predicate instead of having a nothing, that's... Yeah. We're not even doing the completeness yet, right? Well, we are. No, we are, are Rich. We? I can exhaust Ah. Uh, what you're doing. But write the, the next code, uh, Lemos, because that way we can be like meshing our heads without even knowing what we are passing as accumulator. Okay, so this is gonna be a foldem for sure. Uh, whatever is gonna be here, and this is gonna be a list. The list. Uh, is that necessarily from the left? Uh, yes. Okay. So let me try to explain to you, Magetta, if you're not paying attention, what we are doing. We are based on the value of the two match expression so like the v we know that the type of that is a t unit then then knowing that we can we need to check the possible patterns that that can be in the in the oh, following I see, stuff I see, I see i see so that's your completeness like yes i see and for instance if you have a, a, a t unit you cannot have uh, a, a, a p sum type. You can have. The, you cannot have the pattern of a sum type, mm -hmm. right? But you can have a literal with that literal being unit, and you can have a variable because you can name the unit as a name, right? Uh, and you can uh, also have the wild card, like this. And it will change depending on the type. Man, yes. Yes. Stupid. For example, like a string. <laughs> like if you pattern match one, uh, sorry, A B C, and then you pattern match. I don't know. Well, it's also possible to be A, B, C, D, right? So you need to know that. Yeah, so making the pattern matching like proper is the hardest thing so yeah. far, for but for sure. And that's one of the parts, right, Magetta? Like one of the aspects, like the simpler one is, okay, does this thing, does this pattern match the same data type that I have? That's the easiest part, right? So mm -hmm. if we have unit, okay, we just check. It is a unit pattern, <laughs> it is a generic pattern, that's the easy part, right? What is the hard part? It's that based on a few things, one of which is, okay, do we have a, a guard? And yeah, then that, depending exactly. on the guard, you pass something to the accumulator of the fold that tells the next iteration, oh, you still need to match more stuff. You cannot just end here. You need more stuff. Otherwise, you are not complete, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's is still not it. That's still not it. <laughs> because if you are doing something like match, uh, matching ints, you not only... Well, and match ints is like an infinite stuff, right? Yeah, it's it only infinite ends. Options. It only ends if you match a wild card or a variable, right? Uh, yeah, because it's infinite. But the thing is, when you are matching the numbers, you not only have to check if there is still stuff to match, that is, you didn't get a variable before, you not only need to, to see if you are matching a int pattern, but you also have to see, oh, have I already 
uh, give a match on this particular int? Like, have I already matched one? That's also a thing you have to check. Yeah, repetitions are a problem as well because you need to say that, like, this is a problem. I have one twice. So, yeah, my intuition is that the accumulator needs to at least have information regarding what you already matched and what you still have to match. Maybe not for every type, but at least for a few. Yeah, but like I said, so this is like nothing has reached this mental strain as this. Okay. So you were talking what the accumulator needs to grab, to, needs to have again? Yeah, so let's go for the case of units, right? Yeah. Uh, the first thing is, I don't think we need to store the values that we already matched, right? To check for existence, I don't think so. Yeah, not with the unit case. So I guess maybe we only need one thing on the accumulator. And... Wait, wait, what do you mean by storing the things that we already matched? Do you mean saying like, you need to continue because I had a, a guard in the order in the previous one? No, it's like, oh, I matched one. Have I already matched one? Oh, no, but that's the case, right? Because if you do no, like no. this, that's a problem. Does it... Uh, no, 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 it's not a problem. It's only a problem when your litro has possible multiple values. In the unit case, okay, you match the first, and then the accumulator will say, oh, you don't need to match anything more, and that's already enough. You don't need to say you already matched the unit stuff. Oh, okay, so instead of saying that the thing is unreachable, you're just going to ignore it. No. No. You will okay. pass an information to the accumulator saying, I'm already satisfied. Mm -hmm. So anything that comes after, like, okay, it's an error. So is the, in the case of the, in the case of the unit, only the, inf the only information that we need is the satisfaction of the accumulator? Yeah, because the only possible value is unit. Yeah, that's a fucking bad thing. Okay, so if the accumulator is satisfied, we don't care. Is that it? I think so. Okay. Yeah, because like there's no point on like keep going, right? That's it. Mm -hmm. Oh man, this is this is really <laughs> hard. You see. <laughs> This this thing that that we are doing is not something like like yeah, I, li not... I, I I like heavily underestimated. Yeah, this is not. I mean, just doing the guards. I don't think it is hard. Uh, yeah, Lemus. Yeah. For our case, that will be enough. Only checking those satisfied and satisfied. The only thing we are not we are not accounting for. It's probably regarding the R pattern. We probably will have to, to think a, a bit more about that. And the other thing is, you probably will change those a bunch, like those those type there. Because maybe that's not the one you will need for other data types besides your. Let me just double check if the foldm is actually a fold left. It is. Okay. So, so if you have anything, if you have anything with satisfied, we do nothing about that, right? Oh, no, wait. Oh, no, no, no. Right? no, that's that's wrong. Because if you have, like, if you are already satisfied, then you need to, to, to throw an error. That's what you said, right? Yeah. Isn't all, it, it is, is it always an error or a warning? Wow, a warning. Oh. Holy fuck. Okay. But that's the thing. If you don't have the infra to give warnings, just give an error. Man. No, but we do have the infra to, ha to have warnings. So this is a warning. I'm not going to even, even put something here, but this is going to just be satisfied. 
Okay. Pure. Pure satisfied. Okay. Okay. So we are just throwing out that this is going to be, we're going to print something on the screen and then you're just going to return the same satisfaction. Okay. So what do we do if the, if the thing is not satisfied? Right. So that's, I, I guess that's the, the way. Unsatisfied. Unsatisfied. Okay. Oh, I'm writing an example here. Like okay. you will see that this thing is about to become much harder. <laughs> Thanks for why that. Don't, why why don't we drop it? What do you mean? Tra drop in pattern matching? Yeah, wh why matter? What's the point of doing pattern matching? Just do macros and then you do your macro to get better. That's it. <laughs> I guess it's even harder, my kid. Well, it man, is, but it's man, fun. Uh, uh, there's something to say about what what happens to people that interact very often with Benevides. <laughs> people it's start to get completely out of bounds. It's the Benevirus, man. <laughs> it is. Because, yeah, it is hard. Yeah, but having a good, uh, good enough feature is uh, hard. Take a look on the chat. Okay, take a look on the chat. Okay, so what is what do what is that for? So, uh, for example, remember the case of I matching only an integer, and then I uh, I have those rules that are much simpler regarding oh uh, for you to match ints they are infinite. So the only thing will make them like satisfied would be something like a wild card or variable, right? Yeah. So uh, kind of simple. But if but what if you have something that is nested? Like for example, I have a constructor for a sum type there, and nested inside them, I'm matching the pattern for a literal of an integer, right? then how do I know that the next one needs to match another A with inside a pattern that is limited still to everything, but I already matched the one, right? Well, I guess the accumulator needs to store this sort of information. Yeah, but then now it's harder because the thing you will pass to will not be something like, Oh, I already matched one. Now I need to pass. Oh, I matched the constructor that says this first one as one, right? And that's only like one case, dude. <laughs> Imagine if that's more nested. <laughs> yeah, so that will become a lot harder than us. <laughs> Thanks for the encouragement. Yeah, let's. Like try to finish that part and then try to think about the R pattern, use the unit literal. That is probably the easiest case for it. Yeah, so something that I, we also should pay attention to, we also should pay attention to, is the fact that this is not type checking for some reason, couldn't type check, couldn't match type that with satisfaction with satisfaction. Am I doing it in the wrong order? Let me double check. Really not. No, I am. I am. The, the, the thing comes the, the thing comes before. It is a full Oh, event. okay. Yeah. On the function, not on the full calling, right? Yeah. So this is unsatisfied. Dude, I have no idea how you're going to do the, the, the thing that you just said. Equations for functions are different number of arguments. What are you talking? Oh, I didn't remove these. So probably might get a left for dinner or something. By the way, you guys are always like talking about the max and and shit. Then I see you doing all those those decisions, man. Well, uh, we're not we are not in a hurry, so we have the time to go one by one. 
only three times. But you do not do that always, right? No. When I, am in, when I am in a hurry, I actually use Ctrl D and stuff. Uh, yeah. So let's go and buy it. So like the friends. problem. The, the I, 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 no, but that's the thing. I don't think only satisfaction is enough for the T unit, dude. Because if you have a guard, we need to check that we, we had a guard or something. Yes, like, my, my first question is, uh, do we treat any different if it's a literal unit? P variable or wild card? I don't think so. What do you mean by treat differently? Uh, all of them will immediately throw the shots fire at you. Uh, well, ignoring all the, the guards. Okay, so what you're talking is that these three will be pure satisfied. Yeah, like, you see that, uh, for example, let's suppose the int, right? Mm -hmm. You have the wild card, the variable, and the, the pattern int. Mm -hmm. Both variable and wild card will satisfy immediately. But the int pattern, it will not, right? But in this case, you only have one value, that is the unit itself. So all of them, like, satisfy you immediately, right? Yes, I, uh, I agree that all of these three here, if you have a literal unit with no guard, you have a variable with a label, and you have a wild card, none, all of them will satisfy you immediately. I agree yeah, so basically we will just like copy and paste the, the three branches for those. Now we need to deal with the pattern, right? If it is nothing, it will be satisfied. If it is some, it will be unsatisfied. I guess it's as simple as that. No, wait, I am confused. You want to copy paste what to do what? Okay, so... Uh, Get the, the first branch and just copy and paste down. Mm -hmm. And if it has a branch. If it has a branch. Then it's still unsatisfied, right? It is still unsatisfied. So it's going to be pure unsatisfied. Yeah, and this first case with p literal unit it's the same thing for a variable and wild card they are literally copy and paste if they have no oh, wait if we don't care about them having we can ju we can just forget about it right we can just do this right oh no. take a look like both brings are different Oh, if we have a just, which we need to do unsatisfied. I forgot about that. What I'm saying is, the case for p literal unit is, yeah, the same for the other one. Holy shit. A giant matrix. <laughs> we can, uh, when we finish this, we can make them, like, we can make it better by just going to... Nathan knows very well me saying this, right, Nathan? We can make it better later. Yeah, no, I don't I, think you can in No, I can, because uh, we can no, just no, no. abstract like this thing, function out to something else. I'm saying this because this is something that I always used to say to Nathan, and then we never came back to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you have a just, this is going to be unsatisfied. And this also is going to be unsatisfied. And all of this is just to match unit. All of this is just to match, match unit. Okay, what if we don't have any of these three uh, special patterns? Indeed. If it is the thoughts five, then we said the. Oh, that's unreachable, right? Uh... Wait, yeah. you're talking about okay. which case? I'm talking about the case that you, that you have unsatisfied, but you have something else aside from these three. Oh, then it's an error. like, yeah, it's an error also. Okay. The error of, oh, that's the wrong type of pattern. Okay. So if you have unsatisfied, 
Well, actually, besides the R, right? But we are ignoring the R for now. We are ignoring the R for now. Throw error. So... And this one we can actually print. So... Printf, then it's gonna say type, type error. Um, I don't know, couldn't match this. Removing the R, all the types beside the sum types are very easy to do. <laughs> that is, removing everything that is complex, what is left is simple. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I agree. Sounds reasonable, right? <laughs> Sounds reasonable. Oh, this wouldn't happen if we only had two types. Actually, it would. If you had only some types. Well, you could opt only to have integers. You don't need anything else, right? You're just integers. Yeah, that is yeah. little stuff that you can... Oh, error. And you cannot say like, oh, I have only this and I cannot encode the rest thing. Man, Bellani sent me a link. Let me find. Like, it was one, one golden rule that I... I fully understood. It was like, never encode something that is like abstract into integer or something like this. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be satisfaction. So in the case of satisfaction being uh, um, wait, can we ever finish being not satisfied? No, oh, we can. We can. So if you are unsatisfied, that's a mirror. But if you oh. are satisfied. That means that we checked exhaustiveness. Wait, that that doesn't that doesn't happen. That does happen. Imagine that you only have this in the list. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You're, you're right. So if that's the case, uh, throw throw error. <laughs> What do you think about doing what they do, Lemos? Oh, that's one of the examples of something <laughs> that you still need to <laughs> That's fine. So this is going to be type error um, couldn't satisfy um, exhaustiveness. Um, Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to just put it like this for now. Okay, if you are satisfied, then that means that we have uh Yeah, just put some in the description on the warning. Okay. Like an unreachable case or something. Unreachable case. Okay, so now that we have checked for exhaustiveness, right? Let me just see if something is actually working here. Yeah, it is working just fine. It is working just fine. The fold down. Yeah, you, you, sh you shouldn't. Yeah, you probably should not do this code there, like Probably shouldn't. What code? If that's the code of doing the binds and checking the type of the branches, you shouldn't do that there. And I'm not talking about the separate function. No, I know you're not. I'm just uh, adding here because I'm going to forget. Uh -huh. uh, so pattern, we have a maybe, and we have a branch. I don't need the branch, but yeah. Okay. Okay, what you're talking about? What, do you, what code do you want me to move? Uh, no, yeah, so the satisfied branch, right? If yeah. the code you were about to write there, 
be the one that to generate the binds yes. to pipe check yes. the branches and see if all the branches are the same, that could be a huge mistake. Because if you are going to put that code in that branch of this case type, dude, that's huge. I don't know what do you mean it's huge. Uh, you are doing that inside of a branch of the T unit, right? Yeah. So are you going to do that in all the other branches? Yeah. That would be awesome. Because we are. Why good, don't you, you do outside? But that's a <laughs> that's an easy one to roll out, man. It's not something mysterious and unexpected. <laughs> like it's something known already. Okay. Okay. So you're talking about making a function. What's what? What are we gonna do in this function? We're gonna just pick the binds, check if the Why binds. Why doesn't the case returning something like satisfied or unsatisfied? You mean this case? Yes. No, that's not. That, that's exactly what this function would do. Why don't you do all of these in one file? <laughs> Man, if just virus, dude. There's no way. Nata? Mm -hmm. What you said is gonna be what the function check exhaustiveness does. Will do. Okay. So it will pick a type, like, I don't know, T unit. It will grab that list and it will do this sort of uh, things like this Ex exact actually like exactly like this for t unit but instead of returning the satisfaction we return the full dem and that's it okay so uh, um we need to do the the things with the bindings now that's what you said right uh-huh but in the case of a t unit do we have binds to take care of that's the that's the thing if you do it outside, you don't care. Okay, so what is this function? What this function would do? Tell me, please. It's not necessarily a function, right? But suppose you do the following. Uh, oh, wait. Everybody's confused. No, I'm not confused. Please, I'm just trying please. to see if I'm on the same page as Nathan. If that. Like, I understood this. This is checking for exhaustiveness. And we discover, discover that it is a hassle, which is bad. Yeah, I'm thinking about the, the other function, how is it made, because maybe it has something bad about it, regarding <laughs> the repetition of code still. What, what do we need to generate the binds? We still need the initial type, but we know that it is a correct type. Oh, okay, it's not as bad. So, yeah. So the thing is, you still need to do another match on the type, right, to generate the binds. Uh, but it's a different uh, match on the type. Yes. You mean Only this type? One. Yes, I guess so. I'm guessing. I'm ge okay. Why do you need yeah. to do another, key, another match if you already know that it's a T unit? Well, again, that's assuming we are going to do outside, so we don't repeat repeat all of that code. Okay, right? so that function will better match the type. What else? It gets exactly the same thing, man. Oh, it's exactly this. Mm -hmm. So what will this function do? Because like, again, I, I think I am, maybe I am the one confused. When you talk about binds, you're talking about the, the variables, right? The variable names, the P variables. Yeah. So Is yeah, it... it should just return a result type, right? Uh, yes. So yeah. Okay, but in the case of, I don't know, let's do an example here. In the case of a T unit, Right. So what should we do about that? Should we should check if the patterns are all variables. And if they are not, we need to throw an error. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Did 
Dude. Dude. <laughs> oh, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Like, maybe they'll need to match the tie. Maybe it's like some bar or something. No, I think you need to match the type too, because you need. We need to know that. Oh, this is a T unit. Uh, thus, like hands, you can only have a P variable there as a bind stuff. Otherwise, you can't. You need. That's wrong. It's because the. Yeah. So that's the thing. So you check the pattern, because the pattern it's the one that will say if you generate binds or not. Do you agree? The pattern will say if you need to generate binds or bindings or not. That's what you said. Uh -huh. So that I agree with that. The types has nothing to do with it, right? As we can see, even the type unit can generate binds. Depends on the pattern, right? No, no, no. But there is a correlation between the type and the pattern, right? Sure. You need to know the type to generate the binds. But what I'm saying is, it's probably a thing that we pattern we will match the pattern to see if it is one that generates binds if so we get the type to generate them and such right yeah but that's the thing like they are already checked right? so we will probably do some match to get the things from inside right and generate binds and such but that's the thing we can probably later do a function that does the I against pattern generates environment. Wait, repeat that so it picks a pattern? Yeah. Gets a type. Uh, gets a type. A pattern. A length. And like returns a name for you guys. Okay. So this would be the this would be the creation of binds? Yeah. Like, does it look right to you? Yes. Yes, it does. It does look right to me. So, because you are basically updating based on the pattern and the type, you are updating the environment. Yeah, and you can just let all the responsibility like for them. Yes. Okay. Also, okay. that's very good because we can use easily use that in other places. Like, okay, I want to do the structing on a, on a lat. Then you can still use the same. Thing. Oh yeah, that's that's actually a, a good a good catch. We can reuse this later for refactoring the code. Uh, so again, what do you want to return from the case type? We can just return the unsatisfied, right? Or satisfied. Wait, can you repeat the question? Uh, case type. This. Line, yeah. What you return from that expression can literally be the satisfied or unsatisfied. No, but that's the thing. Because, this branch right here should return a type, this guy. We are in type no. check expression. No, no, no. This function, yes. This expression k is type, no. We can do that afterwards because of code repetition. No, no, but forget about code repetition. Let's repeat the code. Let's, like, in, in like, I don't know, 40 minutes ago, you were telling me to do, do in the Greg way, and now you're telling me to do not in the Greg way. Yeah, because the great wave is the things that are unexpected, that you will not know how to abstract, what is the pattern, then you do naively, then you abstract it out. But, well, these you already know where the repetition will happen. So let's do it anyway. So, now generate the binds, right? I... Let's just assume that function exists, right? They create binds. Like, just create them with undefined. Okay. okay. And this function also is going to be undefined, I guess. 
Okay, then what we do? Yeah, now I guess the code might be very simple. Might right? be. <laughs> yeah, you Holy just right. map the branches to the types and then check if they are all equal, right? You map the branches to the types and check if they are equal. We already did this at some point, let me check. Yeah, don't even look at it. <laughs> <laughs> we already did this at some point. Oh, it's in here. So some types, and then we're checking with the list itself. Yeah, yeah. let's just go them. Don't copy and paste anything from there. <laughs> yeah, this is this was the great way of doing it. Uh, okay, so we need to uh, we need to grab all the branches. Is that Let's map list. Don't don't zip and zip and shit. Dude. I'm, Just I'm doing. I'm typing nothing, dude. Because I I know what you're thinking about. <laughs> Let's unzip. <laughs> no, I didn't say unzip. Like I just don't. You were thinking about. I was not. Th I was not thinking about it. Oh yeah, your map is actually a four, right? Uh, no, the map is. We we are, we also want to type check, right? Yeah. And we want so the short circuit four. as well. Mm -hmm. So then we're gonna have uh, for each element, right? Each element is composed out of a pattern, uh, potentially a, a guard, and a branch. We're gonna do reduce type um, type check expression. Uh, Wait, not so fast, right? <laughs> what do you mean? We need the pattern and the type to call the create binds function to create that aim that you are pressing there. Okay, so we actually need the pattern. Oh, pattern is a keyword. I didn't know that. Uh, That's great. Then we're going to create, create binds. We're going to provide the type prime. We're going to provide the pattern pattern and the current environment, and that will return to us a new environment. Uh -huh. And then we do a for with that. Uh, let me move this function here, because this we are in the middle of a function, right? Type check expression. <laughs> and it's not like Erlang, that it allows you to just do that. To do what? Like put functions in the middle of pattern matching one specific function. What is the type of this? I have no idea. Let's do a pure t unit. What is the oh. type? Yeah, it's a list of types. Nice. Just check if all them are. Oh. Okay. Dude, now... I hate I hate list sometimes. You hate list, right? Because you know that we're gonna have to do. I remember commander, man. I hate lists. <laughs> list commander. If all. Uh, X. Yeah, but that's a normal problem. Like we don't use the the how can I say the non empty list data structure. We don't use. Prob there, it, it, probably it is there. We don't they, use. Yeah, probably because they are not first class. But yeah. I don't know. I think it is first class, but we don't use. We have pattern match for them. Yeah. Really. Yeah. You have pattern match for non empty lists. Yeah. No fucking way, dude. <laughs> you're surprised? I, I, I'm doubting that. Oh, you're doubting? Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, Use this. I mean, like, check if the list at least has one thing. Those Haskell folks are. What the fuck? That's the one? Yeah. Oh, I've seen that symbol. The, uh, the Those Haskell amused... folks are <laughs> fucking weird. They're not <laughs> amused face. Oh, not amused. Man. That's that, that's the definition of this guy. Oh yeah, it looks like <laughs> not amused operator. Yeah. Not amused operator. It's like a math face. <laughs> like, uh, what am I doing here, man? Get me out of here. <laughs> oh, awesome. Yeah. So probably they have better modeling. Uh, yeah. For yeah. now, let's do an insecure. Head. Okay, so type error, not all the types in 
These are the same. Super helpful, her message. Branches. What? Are the same. What are you talking about? Uh, Not all the times are the same. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's the it. Times are the same. <laughs> all the times are the same. Ipes for two hours. Okay. That's it. <laughs> so let me see. Yeah, yeah. Ruling. That's very simple, right? When you create the create binds. Yeah, having the create binds is very handy. Yeah, but you are just. How can I say? You're just hallucinating with it, right? You don't really have it. That's a Haskell hallucination, man. Uh, Wait, yeah. these create binds in this context only will ever be used only for. No, no, I would say something wrong. Check all okay, branches. Okay, so take a look on the following nouns. Now, now you will see. That was the branch for the t-unit, right? Yeah. For all the other branches, you will do similar checks with a for, right? But with different rules. And after that, you will do exactly the same code for generate binds and check if they are all the same. Wait, just a sec. So you do that. And this actually returns a result t type. Okay. So this and this. Okay. Can you repeat that? Because I was just taking notes here. Wait. Yeah, that. Doesn't work, Lemos. You need one more type there. Which Check. is? No, one more type. Type. Oh, <laughs> the type, the type of the two match. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now, what you're you're talking about doing the same for all the other cases, is that right? You were talking about doing for all the other cases because we just finished for the T unit. No, what I'm saying is, okay. uh, uh, on the branch of the T unit that we are, we are checking with the for for exhaustiveness and if the types are the same, right? Yeah. Then we have another piece of code after that, branching the satisfaction. Uh, that one of the branches is an error, the other create the binds and check the branches, right? Yeah. You can see that that piece of code will be on the end of all the branches of this case type. You mean this? Yes. Yes, I agree with that. That's why I, may, I am taking notes to make this function here. Yeah, but if you still... <laughs> Even if you put inside the function, if you still call it in every branch of case type, it's still not ideal, you see? Yeah, yeah, we can, we can do better. We can do better. But, yeah, let's... Yeah, but even before going to another branches of case type, we need to finish with the R, man. Because if we don't yeah, 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 the R I with agree, the unit, like, then we are done, right? <laughs> yeah. That's end of career for us. <laughs> no, more or we drop the disjunctive pattern matching. Yeah, that's an option. Because yeah, but that would not <laughs> that would not solve our problem. Because the sum type are nested. We have to learn how to do nested stuff. <laughs> that's true. Otherwise, no, no, no proper pattern matching. Bias. Yeah, that makes sense, that makes sense. Well, why you think about that? I'm gonna make this function here because it's really copy and paste. So let me think. Then you do an if. 
Oh, I forgot this branch. Oops. Oh, I, it is... Wait, I got lost. Oh, it isn't here. Show types. Yep. This is the function. Oh, okay, okay. Maybe it's a lot easier than, than I was thinking. I was. <laughs> Maybe it's a lot easier. From yeah. time to time, <laughs> we discover oh, something. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's a lot easier. Maybe uh... it is. Maybe it is not. Maybe it is not as well. It's part of the process. Okay. Oh man, it's gonna look so much cleaner when we remove this thing as well. Oh yeah, and what I'm thinking about involves other structure that you thought. So Lemos, what I was thinking is, dude, Mm. Do, do, do. The rules for doing the R is exactly the this function, like is exactly this function that we are already doing. It's literally doing that recursively. Yeah, that's my first instinct. If you have a, a an OR pattern, wouldn't it just be the case of calling it recursively throughout the OR? Yeah, I guess so. But yeah. It, it depends on what you mean by throughout the R, right? Yeah, you no, throughout I mean you have two patterns, right? Our P disjunctive has two things, one on the left and one on the right. The, uh -huh. you, you call the you call on the first one. If that is okay, if that is a result like okay, that's not an error, then you call recursively the same function with the right. Yeah, yeah, that would be the wrong choice. That would be wrong choice. Uh what I mean by calling recursively is get the left one, the right one, put it on a list, and call this thing that we are doing again. But you know the... But why would you do that? You would that because are the same rules. For example, if no, no, you no, are no, going... Wait, I didn't, I didn't explain properly. So no, no, but I... Yeah, so you said regarding the result, right? Yeah, Pat, so for instance, do you see this T application here? Do you see that we are doing some process to it with the left? And then if that's successful, we do it with the, with the second one? Yeah. And then every after that, we do something else. I was thinking about doing the same, but calling the function recursively, uh, as we are doing with find placeholder alias. Yeah. Why doesn't that work? Because what you actually want to do is do one recursive call, passing both cases as a list. Because they depend on each other to be right. For the same rules of, if the first part of the R is a catch of cases, the second one is wrong. Oh, we're going to care about that. Okay. Well, that's the other <laughs> <laughs> Okay. You see? Yes. It's not, there is no way. Yes, I see. I totally see now. So you're talking about doing in a list because then we can do the for stuff. The oh, fold man. stuff. I I'm mean. so tired. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, then now you necessarily need to put inside another function because you want to call it recursively. You're talking about the check exhaustiveness function. No, not necessarily. Probably not. This this code would be to go, would go to this function. Not necessarily. No, I'm telling telling you the plan. That was the plan. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so my no, my plan silly. was to pick this function, and then pattern match the t unit and do and and return the fold. Uh, Lemus, a code that check if the patterns are okay. Yeah. Like, let's suppose we have a code, right? A code that check, are the patterns okay? 
What are the possible outcomes? First one, everything matches okay, right? Mm -hmm. The rest are errors, right? Well, actually it depends, right? It depends mm -hmm. on the type that you're dealing with because we have three states. We have an error, we have insatisfaction and satisfaction, right? With a certain pattern. No, 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 no. Forget about, no, forget about this. Forget about our code, okay? You forget we are writing this social code. Just think abstractly. Uh, we have some patterns, right? Yeah. And we have a type. And we want to check if they are okay regarding if the patterns are correct, regarding exhaustivity and stuff, right? Mm hmm the first outcome is everything is okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The other outcomes are all errors, right? Yeah. Between the possible errors we have. Oh, that's unreachable. Oh, that's still lacking pattern, right? Yeah. So why don't we do something like oh okay, that takes a tie, a tie. Oh shit. Yeah, that also needs to consider the, <laughs> is that a bar or not, right? No, and that's something that we're we are ignoring here, right? You're not pattern matching, you're not type checking the guards yet. No, 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 no. The fact that there is a guard, not the type of a guard. Oh, okay. Because uh, we only care about the f if there is one for this format stuff, right? Yeah. For exhaustiveness, you only care if there is one. Yeah, but... Well, that function, you also need to take that information if there is a guard or not, right? Because that's important for exhaustiveness. Yeah. Right? So that could be the function itself, a function that returns result unit, I guess. Right? Because the unit is everything went fine, the error is an error, right? So it didn't match. I'm confused why this needs to be a result unit. Because there is no result that we want to return from it. There is no result that we want to return from it. You want to know if it matches, right? Otherwise, you want an error back. So the function that you're talking about is a function that picks a pattern. It picks a type. It picks the... the... Okay. Use the check as, as exhaustiveness, right? Use this, you're talking so, about? Yeah, yeah. You receive a tie, you receive a list of patterns and booleans, for example. Patterns and booleans, okay. And you return a result unit. Yeah, I am very confused about what you said because when you said think about abstractively, I understand that. But in our implementation, that's not the case. We have three cases, not two cases. What do you mean by that? We only, when you are doing the checking of exhaustiveness in our thing, we have three possible outcomes. We can have uh, an error, like in here. We can oh, have okay. satisfaction and non, non being non satisfaction. Okay, okay, yeah. So the thing is. The satisfaction is an error limit. Unsatisfaction is an error, but wouldn't we... The reason why we are doing this is because we want to treat these errors differently, right? One yeah. is just couldn't satisfy exhaustiveness, and the one and one is just like, you shouldn't be able, you shouldn't do, be doing this, my friend. Maybe I have to work uh, towards that, but essentially the whole satisfied and unsatisfied thing it's just internally for us to do the for. Outside, you don't need to return that. You just want to know, is that an error or not? Um, how are you going to treat the errors differently? Well, you have a result, unit. Is it a unit and everything went fine, or is it an error? Then you have the error. I don't, I don't, wait. Oh, so we are just replacing the satisfaction with unit and everything else is an error. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. No, no, but, but again, 
we probably still need to use the satisfied and unsatisfied inside, right? For the foreign stuff. Inside, you mean only internally, like uh, only yes, like for the foreign. Yeah. So it would be like this, the function that you want. Yeah, but then we don't need the the format of maybe expression and expression, right? We don't care about branches, and the maybe expression should be a boolean, right? Because, well, you don't care about what is inside. Okay, but then we can map that. Yes, but that function shouldn't care about it, right? You do the map outside, and well. Yeah, no, I'm, we're gonna do the map outside. That's for sure. Um, I think we're going to use this throughout more than one branch, so I, sh I think we should. So we want to keep the pattern and we just want the information. I is there a, a, a guard? Is that it? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What the heck am I going to call this function? <laughs> Which function? Uh, keep pattern and guard. What do you mean? What is that? It picks... Uh, is that the mapping function? Yeah. Why don't you just do a where? What do you mean? A where down there? Yeah, where we are mapping. Just inline it along the dude. I don't want to inline it because I think we're going to use it more often. Really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so expression and then this is just going to... What do we not? <laughs> No, I don't know. That's that's what I'm saying. I don't know. And this is a boolean. So keep pattern and guard. This will pick a p. And if this is nothing, we're gonna ignore that. That's gonna be p false. And um, you should have an. This you're gonna just do just. Do you have any type class that implemented to bool or something? You like maybe to boolean you mean? Like a bool that takes anything that implements a to bool. No, we don't need that, right? <laughs> we don't, but I'm saying is is that a generic case of yes. a type class? That... No, we don't. That we it, a type class isn't necessary. You can just pick like a guard here. And then no, no, no. Again, I'm not saying I'm not saying we need for that case, right? And I'm not saying we don't have that solution that we did. I'm saying, is there any type class that implements something that oh, this can be transformed into a boolean? I never heard of that. If there is, I don't know. That would be very specific. But yeah. That would be really weird. Yeah. I get. Oh, there is. <laughs> Is there? Yeah. People Conversion of values to boo. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> Instances of to boo that are also boolean should obey the following rules. Oh, there are even rules for it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What is the name of the type class? To boo. Oh, okay. To boo. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're going to pick the list of things, we're going to apply that function, and then we're going to call the function check exhaustiveness. Oh man, I was sleep, man. Okay, go sleep. Man, I cannot stay awake. That's not a problem. Bye-bye, Magetta. Uh, see ya, folks. See ya. See ya. And we should also finish this. We are already we are already past the two hour mark, but let's let's continue a little bit more. Um. Okay, so go. Let's go back to here. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna do the check exhaust team in this function. It will also grab the. It will also grab the, what is it called? This thing, right? All these things. You can essentially copy and paste the case there. Yeah, so check. So if you have a T unit, then you're going to do a do. This do is this guy. 
but instead of the uh, we only going to use internally you said so case satisfaction case satisfaction Okay, we're gonna rep this is gonna be also repetition, right? This thing. This uh, this pattern match here, like grab the satisfaction. If it isn't satisfied, throw the zero. If it's not, do something else. I guess we're gonna repeat this all the time as well, right? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. Because not necessarily. Not necessarily. Yeah, that's only the case because you are doing the top level pattern match. But if you use an internal function that returns the satisfaction, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I forgot the shortcut to use multiple courses. Yeah, but, yeah, but this went that way is easier. <laughs> Just do the easier way. I yeah, thought sometimes go the go the Greg way, sometimes he, he does not. It's just the fact that would not help as much. Satisfied. So let me grab that error message there. So then we're gonna throw By the way, here. That's probably the the one that probably would be more poorly designed what? for now. This type satisfaction. This type satisfaction? I still don't understand what you mean. Uh, you, you in the future. There's nothing more simple than this data type, dude. No, no, it's because take a look. You are creating this data type just to check that condition inside that for there. If that doesn't apply for the other fours of the other types, then you will create more. Yeah, we're gonna have to enhance the satisfaction. Yeah. So yeah. Or create a new one. Yeah, so see, either they have to fit all in the same thing, then you have to pray to God that it actually ends up in a good abstraction, what you are doing, like they all fit. No, or you will create no, more types and fit. then you have it will not fit. You don't know that. No, I that we already know that because we already discussed mm. that there are situations in which you need to ch you need to carry the information aside from being satisfied or not. We already discussed that. No, no, no. But carrying more information, it's not changing the satisfaction type. It's just passing more stuff in the four. Oh, you At want least... to carry tuples? No. Ah. <sighs> Like they are, they need to be different things. It cannot be inside satisfaction. But I guess it can, but it doesn't make sense. <laughs> but, well, well, let's okay. go. That's something you probably will go back to in the future. Okay. Yeah. So we are done with it. With all the. Oh, okay. Now we need to go back to the thing too. To use the checkers of signals, right? Oh, yeah. Now we need to go down here. And then we gonna do... Oh, the whole case, dude. No, it's not the whole case. How is not the whole case? Because that function checks us exhaustive is not calling this. Huh? Yeah. We can't be the, the case uh, altogether. Because we need to be able to have we the... Literally, just cut the check of branches. Check all branches. Yeah, oh, you're gonna throw that. it there? Huh? You're gonna throw no, it we, up there? No, we will not. No, we will not. Yeah, we will not. So check exhaustiveness. That you pass the type prime. You also pass the list. And that is it. That returns something that we don't care. And then, and yeah. then, and then we're gonna... Be awesome. Check all branches, and that's going to return for us the type. And then everything here vanishes. That's terrible, right? Like, 
the name is Checo branches, but we are not checking. We, we are, are returning checking. a type as a no. We are checking yeah. and returning the 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 the, the, the result of that. Yeah, for me, when someone says check, it's either two things. Or you will return nothing and you do a side effect as in the, in the, in the fashion of I will do a side effect throwing a neighbor. If it doesn't, it's because it passed the check. Or if you return a result or any kind of data that says regarding it went okay or not, right? Okay, so but you change the name of this function. Yeah, not now, dude. But, yeah. Uh, it's done, right? The body of the... <laughs> Three lines. Uh, so, it is the result part working okay? Yeah. Like, tech excessiveness. If it is incorrect, it will just, like, in short circuit everything. Yeah, and... yeah. Oh, okay. That's the power of moments for you. Yeah, or pattern now. Or pattern now. Oh, man, the, the create binds will be so much more fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the create binds, that was definitely a good idea. But let's finish for today, dude. Okay. So we added two hours. Projectile. Let's see if this thing compiles, because it should. Just compiles, please. Oh, it will, not compile, it will not compile because of the parser. If you are rotating, what? Yeah, the parser will not allow this code to compile. What do you mean? Yeah, because it doesn't make sense anymore. What do you mean? The evaluator dude? also broke, because it was assuming that we still have the label in the list of labels, and the parser also broke. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we changed the AST. Not we changed the AST. Like yeah, commit anyway. <laughs> no, it, I will not commit because that will break CI. And? <laughs> Do you have clients now? <laughs> okay, now we know that it's failing on CI. Nice. But, dude, it's better for you to commit than left. Than leaving that on your machine, like we don't know what you. Have. Okay, that's that's fair. I'm gonna finish the stream though. Okay.